All right, so I want to tear down this U-Green adapter and uh, see what's inside. So this is one of the better performing adapters actually. So I wanted to tear it down and see if we can do some analysis and see you know, what makes this thing tick. Why can it do better? So I'm gonna try and crack it and see if we can just get it to pop out with the some grips here. Looks like that's a yes. So we're already in. How did they get that to fit in there? I think I'm gonna have to grab some pliers. All right, Let's see if we can get a grip on this board and just pull it out. Got it. So this thing looks like it is quite filled up. It's got some gunk in there that is juicy. Looks like we definitely have some custom components that I haven't seen before. See these wires that they put in? They did actually get pinched a little bit. That's not from me. So these actually got pinched inside there. So that's not, that's not the greatest thing. And these are very, very, very thin wires. You can see they just crimp them on, on here. Those actually just fall out. I did not pull on that very hard and the wire just came out. That's, yeah, you know, it's okay. They're okay. Once they're in place, they're not gonna move, but uh, don't necessarily like that. As we can see something on this transformer, which, so this, this big yellow thing here is the transformer, the main transformer is doing the switching, that it, uh, it has these separate windings coming out here. These are our isolated windings for the output side. And these windings are large, high current windings, and they're definitely highly separated you can see by the sleeving. We'll have to tear this transformer down and see exactly how good of a job they did in there. There's a lot of goop in here. Let's see our USB-C port here. There is a chip for the power. There's a small chip over here. I'm guessing that is a synchronous diode or resistor of some kind. We have a capacitor here for our output side. And then there's a little circuit board right here. And if we sneak in there, you can see that there's a little white component hiding back there. That is a optical feedback path. So it does actually have a optocoupler to connect through for feedback to the main side. And then over here, our main input's coming in. There is a fuse, a full proper fuse, two amp, 250 volt rated fuse in that little black case right there. That comes in there, it looks like there's some more protection here, probably a either a positive temperature coefficient device or something very similar. So this will uh, protect against inrush current. And then you can see it's going through There's a little tiny common mode choke right there. So that's helping for noise suppression. And then that's being fed right into this, which is a bridge rectifier. And that's directly feeding the main filter and capacitor right here, which does have a couple of bleeder resistors. And it looks like there more, might be more than one of these main capacitors right here. So it looks like two capacitors in parallel. Looks like we have to remove this plastic cap to get an idea of what those are. Looks like there's another filter right here, so an inductor on the end, and then another capacitor after that. And then that's going to be switched by this chip, which I have no idea what that is. It says 1H16 on it. You tell me what that thing is. I've never seen one of those before. That's definitely custom to this. This and this that's a really well integrated package because basically everything is in there. There's almost no other support components. You know, it's a flyback transformer, so we have some some components to be basically a snubber on this transformer. And then we have a, a couple of components here for uh, a voltage for you know the, the keep up voltage basically to keep this thing alive while it's on. So this is a quite a well integrated design. See a bunch of resistors and capacitors going over here to do the smart do the communications over to the USB C port. You can see a current shunt resistor right there, so that's how it's testing for its overload. That little guy right there. And yeah, you can see the three three connections right here, which are the connection for the optical cup optocoupler down to the other board. So there's actually one, two, this little PCB here, three PCBs crammed inside this tiny little thing. And the biggest thing we're really gonna be interested in is how is the isolation on this transformer. And I bet it's fine. You know, it actually looks really good. So the only the only downside I really see to this adapter is these these pinched wires, which are actually pinched to the point of, of being bare copper. And, well, only, only one of them is. Only the, the red wire was actually pinched that far. The, the black wire actually was, was okay. Very close, though. So that's something that could be a little bit scary because these two wires are very close together and just kind of crammed in like that. So, And this would not be protected by the fuse. 
if these two wires shorted together because they're connected right to this main plate. I'm, these wires are very thin, so they would probably just break on their own. But overall, that's a really cool little unit. So let's go a little farther. I'm going to try and get some information on this chip. All right, so I got the board desoldered. We had three connections going down to that other board. This has a no-name brand capacitor here. There's just nothing, nothing on it at all. It's a 470 microfarad 16 volt capacitor though. No brand. So we don't know what the temperature coefficient or the performance characteristics of this are at all. And it wasn't this little rubber booty. So that was protecting it from being in contact with the main side. So there's a little rubber booty. Just took that off. So this was over this capacitor, just protecting between the two sides. You can see our optocoupler 1018. I think that's pretty standard. A little cap protecting our main side. This is our isolation between the main side and the USB side that's mounted up on top here. We have gather brand capacitors, 10 microfarad, 400 volt. Don't see a temperature rating. We have an, an A2011 on them, so I'll have to check out that series and see what they're rated for. All right, well, this is a destructive teardown, so we're gonna start getting destructive. All right, got it removed. So you can see we have the isolation slot board there. That's the, between the main, the primary side and the secondary side. So the mains, the wall, and then your USB port. And here we have our optocoupler, which we already were looking at. And then on this other side over here, this is actually our suppression capacitor. It's just in a really unique package. It's pretty, it's really hard to read the writing. That is actually a Y1 rated capacitor. So they uh, didn't spare any expense there. It's actually pretty nice. Here's our capacitors. Oh, there we go. See, 105 degree C rated. So you can see this is the YKM series. So this is specifically for switching power supplies. Nothing wrong with that at all. They got the requisite capacitor in there for the job that's being done. 105 degrees C rated, so you don't have to worry about it over getting too hot in there because it is rather close to some of these components that are gonna get a little warm. That is probably the smallest common mode chunk I've ever seen. Very, very tiny. They do have markings on the board for what these things are. This chip had the number rubbed off, so we can't see what it is, but we're pretty certain that this is a couple MOSFETs and a little controller in there to do the AC from the transformer conversion to DC, which is what all these components need over here. This is a USB power delivery control chip. So this can handle all the different output voltage modes and everything, and it switches them as required, communicating with the USB device connected. This is a little MOSFET right here, which disconnects the device under an emergency. So this is, uh, you know, paired with this current sense resistor, or this controller. This is what actually cuts out the power when you have an overload condition. So a 16 volt output capacitor, we saw that this device does do up to 12 volts on its output, so that's safe. No problems there at all. So let's get into this transformer and see what we can find. Wrapped up like a little present. That's good. You know, the, the more of this they put on there, the better protection you have from the primary side and the secondary side. All right, starting to get in there. You can see our transformer core. We have these two larger windings kind of disappearing in there. Ah, that's the secondary winding down there. Okay, okay, so we do have three layers to this transformer. We're just starting to break into them now. There's many layers between the primary and the secondary. Okay, so now we got it uncovered here. So this is, a, this is actually a pretty good transformer. What we can see is we have our primary winding right here. It's this kind of medium-sized wire. We have quite a few turns. And then we have our feedback winding underneath that. It's a really small wire. It doesn't need to be a very large wire because it's just um, carrying a very, very tiny amount of power to power this chip. And then underneath that, we have a very few number of windings of very large wire. And this is our secondary winding right here. So there's only like four turns. And that's actually supplying the output voltage. You can see this is a very thick layer of tape right here. So they have good isolation and they also sleeve this cable and this is also uh, coated wire. So there is a double layer of insulation at least between, at all times between the primary two windings and the secondary winding buried inside this core. So overall for a teardown, I'm pretty impressed with the construction and quality of this adapter. It's got good isolation. It has, you know, 
good feedback network, so a proper optocoupler and a class Y capacitor between the primary and secondary sides. Uh, moderately good rated components, so we have 105 degree C rated capacitors on the primary side. It has an input fuse, proper input fuse. It has good isolation in the transformer. Um, it has a modern control chip and output protection MOSFET, output measuring current. You know, it really kind of ticks all the boxes and it's amazing that it fits in this tiny little box. The only mystery we don't know is we really don't know what this little chip is right here. And we also don't know what this big switching chip is here. This is some integrated all-in-one package. Cool stuff. Don't know what it is though. If anybody does know what this is, please leave it down in the comments. It would be really cool to get a data sheet on this chip because it looks like something that would be really useful to get a little more information on. But well, basic flyback design, very standard, no surprises at all. So this is a little flyback converter and overall good quality design made by Ugreen. I like it, pretty nice, good stuff. I don't plan to tear down all these USB adapters because they're, well, I, I plan to use quite a few of them and they're pretty expensive. This one was a little less expensive and I was just curious if there was any kind of cheaper componentry used or I was curious how they got the cost down as much as they did. And so if you want to see another video where I actually do the review of this rate and test all the different rating points for it, uh, click the links also in the description. I'll have some information about this little power adapter so you can check it out and you know decide for yourself if this is the one for you. I like it. I might be buying another one. Thanks for watching. And uh, check out all my other videos on uh, USB power adapters and all kinds of other things. Thanks again. Bye.